Um, let's start off with an overview. What is Flower One? So we are a cannabis company and we're focused uh, in the U.S. market. And as a step one, we're focused in Nevada. Okay. We, uh, we're, we're really excited about the Nevada market. It, you know, we can talk a little bit about that, but uh, in that market, we have two assets. We have a 25,000 square foot indoor cultivation production facility. It has five licenses, uh, four operational, one provisional. And we have uh, our flagship facility, which is um, uh, the largest commercial scale greenhouse in Nevada. Hmm. It is uh, currently uh, under conversion. We've put about 40,000 hours of construction renovation into it. Um, how big is it? What's the footprint? So, uh, all in, it, it will be 400,000 square feet of cultivation. Oh, that's a big facility. It is big. Uh, and then it, right adjacent and, and built onto the uh, structure of the greenhouse will be a 55,000 square foot uh, post-harvest production packaging facility as well. So, hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's large. You know, we think in, in the cultivation production space, scale will win. And, um, you know, it's very important when you're playing the long game in the space. And when you look at Nevada, it's a it's a consumption heavy market with the with the uh, significant tourist population of Las Vegas. Right. And so uh, you know we we really like the market. It's well regulated. Uh, so we think there's tremendous opportunities and we're well positioned. Sure. And is Nevada one of those states where you can be vertically integrated from seed to sale in the retail context? Yes. You, you know we, the way it's structured in in Nevada is you can own any part of the value chain. So currently there's about 270 or so license holders in the state. 270? 270, but that's along every part of the value chain. So if you broke that up, you have about 115 cultivators, uh, 80 producers, and those are license holders that can process dry flower and trim. About 62 to 65 uh, in the market today active retail dispensaries and uh, nine distributors and, and nine labs, mm -hmm. roughly. So that's, that's the composition of the market today. Uh, you, so you can own one of those licenses along the value chain or all of them. In our case, um, we're, a, we're a big believer in concentrating on where we're, we're, we're good. Okay. And uh, our strength is cultivation first and foremost and production. And uh, you know, we, we, we've approached the Nevada market in a, in a fairly unique way. Um, our focus isn't vertical integration. We don't okay. see that as being paramount or critical to the success of our business. We, um, what we really like is, is the fact that when you look at the Nevada market, one of its defining attributes is that heavy tourist base in Las Vegas. You have, in the state of Nevada, you have 55 million people that come into Nevada every year and uh, about 42 to 45 million that target Las Vegas. So that's a significant influx. It's a steady flow in terms of a, an addressable market coming in 12 months of the year. And, you know, for us, we really, you know, we, we really see that as being uh, significant. It's, it's a rec-based market. So, so for us, you know, we, we look at that and say, if you're a brand in the United States and, and you've had success and gain market share in another market like California, um, you want to build your brand equity eventually across the country. And right now the U.S. is very fragmented in, the, in that it's a state-by-state -state market. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so really for, for, for those brands, the opportunity with Las Vegas is you've got those tourists that come in, they're, they're in there for a, a purpose and it, we feel it's very much aligned with cannabis. They, they have that experience of using your brand or your product in the market and they go back to their home market. So it's a very efficient way to build brand equity and we think those brands for that very reason are attracted to the Las Vegas market. Mm. So if, if that brand wants to enter the market, they really have only one of two pathways to get there. Uh, they either um, acquire licenses, build up cultivation and production so that they can grow, process and package their, their, their product, mm -hmm. or they can partner with a company like Flower One. Hmm. So, so, so that for us is the opportunity and, and uh, you know, right now we're in the midst of having um, you know, many concurrent conversations with brand partners. Sure. Okay, so in the grand scheme of things, is Nevada going to continue to issue licenses across the whole value chain on a progressive basis? Increasing competition? Yeah, it, it's not. Uh, I think the state has made a decision that, um, with the exception of retail, uh, they're fairly comfortable and feel the number of licenses that are in the system today uh, is the right number. Mm -hmm. So, in the case of retail, and this really benefits Flower One, the state has just approved 
in effect, the doubling of retail licenses. So uh, literally just earlier this month, uh, we're moving from about 62 licenses to over 120. Mm. So by this time next year, you'll see a doubling of the retail footprint. Mm. And each of those you know, 120 plus retailers uh, they're key customers for us. We, we want to do business with all of them, and um, so they're going to double the retailers, but not double the growers. Precisely. Huh? Yeah. Well, that's uh, built-in <laughs> value proposition yeah, right it, there. It's uh, again, I think you know we feel we're really well positioned um, sure. to serve that market and work with uh, many reputable brands who, who really want to gain shelf space in the state. Right. Okay, so then is your ambition ultimately to become a multi-state operator or are you going to focus exclusively on Nevada? Yeah, I, I think we get asked that question all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and really the answer to that is um, our commitment to our shareholders is to stay sharply focused on Nevada. Um, you know, I, I think what we're seeing in this space both north and south of the border, but particularly here in Canada, is that Shareholders now are really expecting public companies in this space to deliver results, uh, generate revenue, generate cash flow, and 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 deliver those numbers. And and from our from our point of view, uh, you know, with our board, our management, and our senior executive team, we you know we don't think we can do that well or do that qu you know quickly unless we focus on a single market. So, you know, Nevada for us is is the focus. And um, you know, if you sort of look at where the company will be over the next two quarters, we'll basically be onboarding plants, we'll complete the greenhouse conversion in January, uh, February we'll onboard plants, we'll yep. be fully canopied uh, in that facility in early Q2, and we'll be doing our first harvest and processing um, in the back half of uh, the first half of the year. So mm -hmm. for us, that's, you know, that, that's significant, and I think once we get there, I think then our board and our advisory team uh, we'll then look towards other markets and okay. you know, there's a lot of good markets. We like California particularly. So what are the opportunities for consolidation in Nevada and is that something that you guys are sort of looking at as a growth strategy? Yeah, consolidation for us in Nevada isn't something we're looking at and I think the reason being, you know, we have such significant scale in, in, in the market today. If you took, you know, the top eight or ten cultivators and producers in terms of just pure square footage and average that out, um, we're about 12 times larger. Huh. So, so we yeah, really that's a big facility. I've been to a few in Nevada, and there's nothing near that size yeah. that I've seen. Anyway, yeah, we all, you'll have to come and see ours the next time you're down. Yeah, but, definitely. But it's um, you know it, it's you know we have sufficient scale. Mm -hmm. We may look at a few additional assets to support production and processing down the road. But at 455,000 square feet, we really feel what we have what we need to accommodate uh, you know the needs of our brand partners in the market. Hmm, very interesting. Okay, so then is the um, is the proliferation of grow growers and uh, distributors in terms of the retail context is that something that you think is is closely regulated in terms of available market addressable market versus available supply and is that what's governing the state of Nevada's distribution of licenses? I'm just trying to understand why they would allow double the uh, dispensaries or sales, retail sales locations while not increasing the available suppliers. And is that, is there a formula that you're aware of there? Yeah, I'm not aware of a formula, but I, I think I could say a couple things. One is when you look at, uh, at the market, the addressable market, um, you, you know, it's uh, 70, 75% 70, of the market uh, is really concentrated in the Las Vegas area okay. for, so obvious, tourists, for obvious reasons. Tourists, uh, it's a heavy rec market. And are there numbers that you can speak to as, in terms of what exactly is the cannabis market in Nevada in the last quarter or year? Yeah, so, so the state, because it has seed to sell tracking, they have a very good handle in terms of metrics. So uh, a couple of things there, uh, the run rate right now, if you looked at total annual revenues, total sales mm -hmm. of cannabis in Nevada, it, it's, it's at about a $600 million run rate hmm. uh, per annum. So. Okay. Uh, so, you know, we're only 18 months into uh, into full legalization. Uh, we think it's at least a billion dollar market. So I think the way the, 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 the regulators in the state look at it is, 
uh, you know, there certainly needs to be uh, a broader retail footprint to meet mm -hmm. that market, not just in Clark County, but, you know, in, in markets like Reno and Carson City. Right. So, so I think that's important. Um, and, and I think when they look at projected supply coming online, mm -hmm. including, you know, uh, our forecasted supply, which is about 140,000 pounds, 62,000 kilograms, I think they, they sort of see that there's enough there likely in the short term to meet the market needs. Right. Okay. Well, that's great, Ken. Um, we're going to uh, leave it there. We'll come back to you in due course and have you back again. And we great. will come down and shoot your facility because I'd do. love to see that big yeah, thing down there. Yeah, we'd love to have you down there.